What are you doing to me, unassigned reference exception error? I just want to find my apple. I can see it's right here. Why won't you find my apple? Oh, it's not attached. There's my apple. Welcome everyone to Wild Cockatiel Games, Unity Game Programming for Beginners. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the three different types of find methods that you can use in your game development. What exactly are these find methods anyway? Well, the best way I have of explaining them is that they are ways of attaching variables to scripts through code instead of by dragging and dropping them in the Unity editor. So what you saw me do just now before this Google slide was dragging and dropping, and that's the by hand sort of method. We want to show how to do it the same thing, but achieve it through the use of code. And the first of these three ways that we can do is using gameobject.find. And that's where we find and attach variables by literally typing the name of what we're looking for. And that has uh, some big disadvantages, but I'll show you what the uh, strengths and weaknesses of those are in a moment. The second is we are using a gameobject.find object of type. And here we can seek out and attach a specific script or scripts, animators, basically whatever type of object we want to look up and return. And then the third type is find object or objects with tag. And here we're kind of doing the same thing, but instead we're using tags to look for objects and then attaching those to our variables. So we can assign different types of objects here, but again, we'll take a look at an example of that. Let's get started by going into gameobject.find. So you saw me messing around a bit here at the start of this video by dragging an apple onto this apple controller script under this apple reference. And all these find object of type methods, what they're doing is essentially exactly this. They're taking this object here in the hierarchy and they're dragging it onto here, only they're doing this through code, they're doing this automatically, and they're doing this without you having to go over here and drag it and drop it yourself. There are advantages and disadvantages to doing it both ways, and we'll be taking a look at those. But let's get into the back end and take a look at how we can do this same thing here through code. So we are now in the back end looking at the Apple controller script, where all I've done is declared a public game object variable and called it Apple. If we go here under start and start to write Apple equals game object dot find, we're going to see that we have a long list of all those different method types that I talked about on the on the Google Slides. And let's just start with the very first one, which is gameobject.find, which is requesting, as you can see here, a string with the name of the object it's looking for. And in this case, the object we're looking for is simply called Apple. If we put a semicolon and save, we can go back to Unity. We are now in the front end, and if you see over here, I have unattached the Apple game object from the script. And if we hit play, let's see what happens. The Apple has automatically been attached to the Apple controller through gameobject.find. That's pretty cool. But let's unhit play and make a change. Instead of calling this Apple, let's try calling this Apple 1. Press enter, so the game object name has changed up here. And we'll hit play again. And now we'll see if it still attaches. And of course, it does not. And this is one of the major disadvantages of gameobject.find. The find method looks for the entered string exactly as it wants to find it up here in the hierarchy. So even if we were to go here and change this to apple, but with a lowercase a, so it's still spelled apple, but now we're using a lowercase, and we hit play, uh, it's still not going to attach because it's looking for that capital A. So this is a huge disadvantage of gameobject.find. It can be a reason not to use it, but if you know that there is going to be an object spelt exactly the way that you want it to be, it can be a quick and easy solution for locating and attaching that object. So let's quickly review gameobject.find. It looks for game objects of the requested name via a string, and it returns the first object found in the hierarchy matching that string name. It's a fast way to get a reference to a specific game object that you're looking for, as long as you know the name, but it has a major downside, which it will not work if you change the game object's name, or perhaps if there's a spelling error. So 
I try not to use GameObject.Find, honestly, it's too much of a risk, but in certain instances, it can perhaps work. And it has another downside, and that's true of all of these methods. It can slow down your game, especially on mobile, if this method is used too often. Okay, now let's take a look at the second of these variable types, and that is apple equals gameobject.findobject of type, and that's what these two opening closing brackets. And now it's asking us to take in an object. If you remember from the first part, this was not asking for an object, it was asking for a string and we typed apple. Here, it's asking us for what type of object we wanna take in. Now we wanna find our apple, but right now it's declared as a game object. But let's just try typing apple and see what happens. We wanna find this exact script. So the nomenclature is the two parentheses and a semicolon. And as expected, it has a red underline under it, which means something is wrong. What's wrong in this case is that we are asking it to find our Apple script, but we haven't declared a variable for it. We've declared that uh, this variable here, Apple, is equal to a game object. If we want this red underline to disappear, we have to tell it that Apple is now the script. Apple, that's the reference we want. And as soon as we type that, the red squiggly underline goes away. Let's hit save and go back to Unity and see what happens. Okay, if I hit play, we can see that now, absolutely, the Apple script has attached over here. That is now attached onto the Apple controller through gameobject.find. That works, but what happens if we start adding some additional apples into the scene? These are some extra Apple prefabs I've created, and each one of these, as you can see, has an Apple script attached to it. Well, now if we hit play, we're going to see that our Apple controller takes in Apple number three. That's the last Apple we created. So if I was to delete Apple number three now and hit play again, now it's going to find Apple number two. So it's basically, it's attaching the latest object it can find that's been, or the most recent object it can find with the Apple script on it that's been dragged and dropped into the scene. Now, another thing is what happens if we go onto all of these Apple prefabs and remove the Apple script altogether and then hit play, we're going to see that uh, the Apple controller hasn't taken in any variables because it's looking for that script and now none of these apples have that script attached to them. Now, by far, the most common use of gameobject.find is finding and attaching scripts onto variables. However, you can use it for more than just that. If we go back into the editor, we can see that if we wanted to, we could still declare this as a game object and immediately we're going to get this underline. But if we want, we could just tell it to find the first game object it finds. Now it's, it's called Apple, but it's probably going to find something else. Let's go back over to Unity, take a look. And if we hit play when it's looking for the first game object, the Apple controller is now going to, well, it's still going to find Apple 2 because that's the most recent object added into the scene. However, if we add in, say, a banana, because bananas are important, you need bananas too, and we hit play again, take a look at the Apple controller, now it gameobject.find is finding the banana because we're not telling it specifically to look for an apple, we're just telling it to look for any game object, and it's finding the most recent one that's been added into the scene. So again, we could use gameobject.find to, to find an animator, I could spell animator correctly, and then get the red underline, change this, and then hit save. Go over to Unity, run it one more time, and it's of course going to come up with nothing because none of the objects have a game, have an animator into the scene. But if we were to put an animator on this banana, and then hit play one more time, now we're going to see that the Apple controller goes and it finds the animator attached to this banana. One more thing I want to show you guys quickly here is how we can use find objects of type by turning this into an array. Now we want to take, a, we're not going to look for an animator. We're going to look for an apple. And over here, we're going to type apple. And you might be wondering, why is there a red squiggly underline? It's because we need to declare this as an array. And we do that by typing two square brackets after apple. Now let's go back, save and go back into Unity. Okay, now we have an apple of size zero, and this is because we've declared this as an array, it's a different variable type, but let's hit play, and we can see that as soon as it runs, it finds and it locates 
all of the apples. There's three of them in the scene. Doesn't matter how many there are. And this is one of the big advantages to find game objects of type. It doesn't matter that later if I want to add in a couple more apples, if I hit play and I run this again, it's going to just continue to find and add all of the apples. The advantages of doing this through code rather than through dragging and dropping. Now just to really nail the subject down, what happens if I change this back again to game object as an array and I tell it to find all the game objects in the scene? Well, if we hit play, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to find not only the apples, but also the banana, also the main camera, and also the Apple controller, because every single one of these objects here is a game object. We're no longer specifying find only the apples. That's why we usually use game object .find object and objects of type for locating scripts. There might be circumstances that call for you to use it for other conditions, but uh, largely it is used for finding and locating and attaching all of those scripts. Now that you've seen GameObject.FindObjectOfType in action, let's do a quick review. So number one, it looks for scripts or other objects of the requested type and returns the first one found. Just remember from the example, that you can't declare the variable as a game object and then search for an apple or the other way around. You have to declare and search for the same type of object. Number two, it's a fast way to get a reference to a unique script or another object without dragging and dropping. So it is that back and substitute. It's very good at finding something unique. Or you can use find objects of type, that is the array version, to return all the scripts or objects of the requested type into an array. And the main advantage with this is it gives you flexibility. If you're building a game and you want to add more objects in, you don't have to worry about dragging and dropping additional items. It will just know that it has to find all of them. The downside is that there is a potential for mix-up if trying to attach a specific object with multiple objects of the same type in the scene. So if you have multiple apples in the scene, but you only want a specific apple to be referenced as that variable, you should either drag and drop, or you can use another method, such as using a loop with an identifier to find that particular apple. We haven't gone into that level of detail in this video. And another downside, which is the same as GameObject.Find, is using this too much can slow down your game, especially if you're on mobile. Let's go into the next section, which is using GameObject.FindObjects with tags. Now, what we have to do here is go over to Apple and go over to Add Tag under the Tag area, and we have to make a tag for this. And we can just simply call this Apple. Now, the thing to remember here is that after you create a tag, you also have to attach that tag to the game object that you want it on. It will, you cannot, if you go and create a tag, it's not automatically going to tag that object. So let's just select all our apples here and apply a tag to them and then go over into the back end. Now that we're in the back end, let's once again type apple is equal to game object dot find. And one thing you might notice right away here is unlike these other ones, find object of type, find objects of type, this one specifically says find game objects with tag or find game object with tag. Let's pick the array version first. And in this case here, we're once again going to be putting in a string just like game object dot find. And the name of our tag is apple and same as game object dot find, the spelling definitely counts. So let's hit save and go back over to Unity. So let's hit play and see what happens. And all of the apples have been added into this array. Now you might be thinking to yourself, big deal. Why bother with this when GameObject.FindObjects of type did basically the same thing? Well, there are a couple of differences. And one of them is that we can apply Game, find objects with tags, find game objects with tags to different sorts of items regardless of their script. So for instance, we know that apples have an apple script and bananas have a banana script. Now, what if we just apply a different tag and instead of making an apple tag, we can make a tag that's just called fruit and save that and then apply 
fruit tag to all of the different fruit objects, hit save, go over to the code, and instead of searching for apples, we can search for fruit, go back over to Unity, hit play, and we're going to find that the Apple controller has added all the fruit into the array, regardless of whether it has an apple or banana script attached to it. Okay, but remember when I said to pay attention to this, said specifically find game objects with game being the operational keyword here? What would happen if instead of searching for the game object, we searched for apples? Well, we're going to get a red squiggly underline, and that's because find game objects with tag does exactly that. It can only add types, the type of game object into its array, or if we were to just search for without the S and just search for the single one fruit, again, it's only going to add the game object. That means if we want a reference to the scripts attached to it, we would then have to use get component and declare apple apple script equals apple dot get component. Uh, doing my code a bit backwards here. And then we would have to have it as a separate variable. So it can be really good if we want to get references to a bunch of different objects that have different scripts attached to them, or perhaps objects that we don't particularly care about the script, or even just objects that don't have scripts attached to them at all. But if you do want references to those scripts, you're going to have to get those separately. Or again, you can just do that by dragging and dropping depending on the circumstances. Okay, it is time for one final review. So game object at find object with tag, it looks for game objects via the requested tag. It's a fast way to get a reference to a unique game object without dragging and dropping or even needing to have a script attached at all. You can use the array version to return all game objects with the requested tag into an array, but it has multiple downsides. With the first one being the same as gameObject.find. It relies on making sure that the requested tags are spelled properly, case sensitive and all. You might forget to tag certain game objects in your scene, in which case things would break, they wouldn't work properly. It can only search for and add game objects, not scripts. Very important. If you want references to the scripts exactly, you either will have to use a loop or remember to use get component for a single object, but you can only find and add game objects. And another downside, same as the others, it can slow down your game, especially on mobile, if used too often. So do use these methods sparingly, preferably in start or awake, not necessarily an update where you'd be using this every scene, you would uh, clog up your game very quickly. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this cleared up the different methods, but if you do have any questions on how these are used a little more, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks very much and take care.